um, in light of war with Russia, right now Russia's war with Ukraine trying to take over the territory, a lot of people started to connect Gog and Mag Magog and into the pretty much sticking that into the end time prophecy that this is a fulfillment and pretty much that this is that. Um, and like you mentioned, it's about the uh, newspaper eisegesis. Um, how, and I've read in your book, I mean you've pretty much destroyed that argument that a lot of Bible prophecies are using that, that Gog and Magog um, is Russia and that they are part of that prophetic. Could you speak a little bit into that? Yeah, so basically uh, to keep it simple, Ezekiel 38, 39 tells the same story that so many of the other prophets tell. They speak of a coalition of nations that will invade Israel led by our, you know, a dictator. Um, Ezekiel calls him Gog. Daniel 11 calls him the king of the north. Um, you know, it's, it's the Antichrist. Um, but the reason that a lot of people go, no, but this is a different evil end time dictator. This is a different massive coalition of nations. This is a different invasion of Israel. The reason they separate it and see it as, as someone distinct is because all of the nations are clearly North African Middle Eastern nations. So because so many people begin with this false Roman presupposition, then they look at this other prophecy where it's clearly a Middle Eastern coalition. And they go, oh, this must be a different end time bad guy. And I go, no, it's the same guy that all the other prophets are talking about. The story the prophets are telling, it's actually pretty simple. In the last days, there'll be a, a dictator just like Nebuchadnezzar, just like Antiochus Epiphanes, just like um, any of the you know Assyrian invaders or so on and so forth. He'll gather a coalition of nations, invade the land of Israel, Jesus will return and kill him. Um, he's called Gog. Other places, he's called the Antichrist, the King of the North, the Man of Lawlessness. Now, why do people believe that Gog is Russia? Well, because you have all these names listed. It's He's Gog from Magog, from the land of Magog, mm -hmm. chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, Gomer to Gorma, Persia, Cush, and Put. So it lists these different names. And it says in many nations with you, so it's not exhaustive. Mm -hmm. But it lists most of the primary players. Now, there's two ways to interpret these very ancient biblical names. One method is to try to get out all of our historical resources, get out Herodotus, get out Josephus, get out all of these historians, and try to trace the bloodlines the intermarriages, the migration patterns of all these different peoples. And so, for example, people will say, well, Magog, um, Josephus says the Magogians became the Scythians. Now, the Scythians, that's like such an incredibly broad term. But these were basically all of the tribal um, nomadic peoples that lived in the Middle East. They lived in Turkey. They lived, eventually they migrated up around through, you know, Romania, through Moldova, through Ukraine, up into Russia, around the Black Sea. And then they intermarried with a lot of these Scandinavian Viking peoples that were called Rus. They came down, they intermarried, and eventually they became the Russians. So you get some people that will say Magog. Gog is from Magog. That's Russia. The other method of interpreting these names is simply to identify how they were understood in Ezekiel's day. How did Ezekiel understand these names? How did his immediate audience understand these names? This is called the historical grammatical method. You just go, okay, in Ezekiel's day, Gog was Turkey. Meshech, Tubal, that was Turkey. So he was trying to point to the region of Turkey. Today it's called Turkey. In Ezekiel's day, it was Magog, Meshech, Tubal, okay? The geographic correlation method. Now what these guys do that say, well, Magog became Russia, is from one name to the next, from Magog to Meshach to Gomer, they switch methods back and forth. Mm -hmm. And when they do that, it's like a card trick. Because most people just reading their books or listening to their teaching, they don't understand how the magic's done. They just go, oh, this guy, I trust him, I believe him, he's a good teacher. He just laid out a convincing case that, that Russia is going to lead this Middle Eastern coalition. But what they don't realize is that he switched methods right in the middle of the trick. If you want to try to say that Magog is Russia, you have to use this historical bloodline DNA migration study with every single one of the names. And all of the names are Japhetic peoples, which means they are the Caucasian children of Noah. And if you follow Gomer, 
Beth Tagorma, Meshach Tubal, etc., you end up, you have to not just include Russia, you have to include South America, North America, Australia, New Zealand, Ukraine, all of Europe. Mm -hmm. And you have to say, it's not just the coming Russian invasion of Israel, it's the coming Panamanian invasion of Israel. It's the coming Brazilian invasion of Israel. It's the coming Canadian invasion of Israel. But no one ever does that because that doesn't sell books. What does sell books is Russia. And so, uh, you know, I like to be the magician that comes and goes, hey, guys, I'm going to show you how all the magicians are doing their tricks. It's a trick. And let's be better students of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I would argue that the historical grammatical method is a more responsible method. We have to be consistent when we do so. Ezekiel is talking about a Turkish-led Middle Eastern North African coalition of nations that will invade Israel under the headship of the Antichrist. It's not talking about Russia. I am not vindicating Russia by saying this. I'm not saying that Putin is that Putin is a good guy. I'm not saying what he's doing is right. I'm saying he's just not Gog. And so that's an important qualifier distinction. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for explaining that.